Hello and welcome back, this is Dawn. In today's video, we're gonna be having a lot of fun. We're gonna be getting messy. We are gonna be doing some stamping with Distress Spray Stains and Oxides. I ended up creating several cards, but all of the cards use the same basic techniques, just utilized in different ways. So this is the card that we're ultimately gonna create, but I'm gonna go over all of the techniques. So let's jump right in. First things first, let's go over our supplies. And the star of the show here is this poinsettia and pine cones from the rabbit hole designs illustrated by Kelly. Y'all know Kelly's my girl. I will have a link to her video down below where she has uh, Copic colored all of these beautiful, beautiful images. And I zeroed in on this pine uh, segment here. I love this image and I'm gonna show you how to use it for not only your background, but your foreground and no coloring required. Now for the sentiments, I went over to the heartfelt hello from Honeybee Stamps. I love the sentiments in here and I just wasn't ready to go full on Christmas yet. So I decided to make them all occasion or fall. Now for my background, I used this. This is our script background. This is retired. This is from W plus nine, but our vintage ephemera has a smaller script background that could be used for the same thing. Now we're gonna be using water and plenty of it. So we need a good mixed media paper. This Vicki Booten mixed media paper is my favorite by far, hands down. Uh, you've seen me recommend this before. It's still up there in my top, top three papers. Nice and thick, 140 pound, and perfect for handling all of your wet mediums. Now this is a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, so I'm cutting it into four by six panels. That'll give me six um, panels to work with. And this is nice because once we get going with that spray stain and we're stamping, it's so much fun. You can go through a whole stack in no time, but we don't have to stop and recut backgrounds. We can just pull from our stack and keep going. As I mentioned in the title, we're gonna be stamping with Distress Spray Stains. In this case, I'm using Salvaged Patina and Vintage Photo. I've laid down my craft mat and I'm just gonna spray these directly onto my craft mat. You will be surprised at the beautiful colors that you can create when you allow these inks to mix on the mat while you're inking up the stamp. You'll notice the cards that I showed you primarily were brown and green. I didn't use any green spray stain. I used Salvaged Patina and Vintage Photo. Now that vintage photo is very intense, very strong. It'll quickly overpower that salvage patina. So I used much less of it than I did the salvage patina. Now I'm taking that stamp and I am just tapping it through the color on the mat here. I do stamp off once to get some of that um, color that may pull in between the valleys of the stamp here, just to get that out. And then I'm just gonna stamp. You can see here, we've got some pulling of the color that's fine. We're not going for a perfect, clean, crisp impression. I'm gonna stamp this down again on the other side and you can see here, you're never gonna get the same impression twice. You can keep going through your pile of ink, tapping your stamp into it. If you notice you've got a lot of um, ink pulled, stamp it off once on your mat, on a clean area. But if you don't see anything pulling, go ahead and take it to your cardstock. Heck, take it to your cardstock anyway. Find out what results you'll get. This is one of those things where you can't be too controlling, okay? You can try to control it, but it's not happening, you guys. What you get is what you get. But what you get is amazing. So here, I'm just showing you the basic technique. Now, here's the fun part. Add water. Do you wanna break some of that up? Do you wanna make it look a little more organic? Blend some of those areas of stamping together? cause some lost edges. Just take a little bit of water. Here I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer and I'm not doing the full on blast of water. I'm just kind of half squeezing the trigger and allowing some giant droplets to fall onto the cardstock. Then I'm gonna use a paintbrush and I'm gonna move some of that color and water around. Again, this is one of those things where you're not gonna have a ton of control over where it goes. I'm intentionally holding my paintbrush at the very end so that I'm not trying to control what I'm doing here. I'm just doing some quick tap motions, moving it around. Once I've got some ink on the end of my paintbrush there, I'll splatter it back onto the paper and I just keep going. Picking some areas where I saw some of the water pool, kind of moving it through the image, spreading out some of that ink, couple taps to get the excess off and create some splatters if I want. I can dip my paintbrush into water to pick up more move that around a little bit more. And you can see here how we are now getting this very organic pattern. The imagery, you can't really tell where one starts and one ends. 
they're blending into each other. We've got some areas of detail and then we've got some areas that are super washed out. And this is what we want because this is gonna be our background. All we're doing here is building an interesting background of color and imagery, that's it. And I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step on how to do the sample panel here. But remember, I created a whole bunch of them and I used some different colors on others. I'll show clip it, clips and snippets of those. But I wanted to walk you through one of them because all of them were created with the same technique, just in different variations. Inking up that stamp using the stain from our craft mat. It's amazing what you can do um, with just a little bit of ink and water. Never ceases to amaze me. Now I do want to point out that this technique works best for me when I'm using uh, mixed media cardstock. So wood pulp paper that's been treated to handle wet mediums versus using actual cotton watercolor paper. And that's my, my theory is because these distress stains are very intense and they can quickly stain the cotton watercolor paper. Whereas the mixed media paper being that it is wood pulp and it has a generous, generous sizing on the outside of the paper that the ink sits on top more readily and moves around. Like I could, I could probably lift this all the way to the right, the right, the white of the paper in a lot of places. Whereas with watercolor paper, that just wouldn't happen. All right. So let's move on to step two. We've dried this down and this is optional. All of it's optional. Every single part, this whole video is optional guys. But if you want to add a little bit more variation in the background, a little bit more uh, watermarking, all that good stuff, I added water to the ink that was already on my palette here. And then I'm just going to dip my cardstock into areas of it. So there was a big old droplet here. And then I'm going to use my finger to just kind of move that around. Spray it with some water to dilute it a little bit. And then just kind of help it along. Again, this is one of those things where you don't don't be trying to control this too much. It's it's not going to work out the way you think it will. <laughs> it has a mind of its own. And it honestly turns out better when you just kind of leave things to chance. All right, so we've dried that down as well. And I'm trying to decide, do I want to pick up a little bit more? And I do. The thing that I like about doing the smushing is that you can get those little speckle spots and you can get some really deep spots of color. I don't want to go overboard just yet because there is another step that I want to do and that is adding some watercolor stamping in the background. But here is where we're at. I love this. I love that wishy-washy background that kind of um, washes in and out of the image. So some of the image is in focus and some of it is watered down and kind of washing away. Okay, so I'm not going to waste what's on the stamp. I've cleaned up my mat here and we're going to use the ink that's left on the stamp. We're gonna spray it with some water here, about two or three quick bursts, and we're gonna stamp with that. We're gonna get a much softer impression, a little more watered down, and not as much detail, but still just as pretty. And this is another option. If the sprays are a little too um, outside of your comfort zone, you can ink your stamp up with uh, Distress Ink Pads or Distress Oxide Ink Pads, spray the stamp with water, and stamp down. It is a great look, and I do it all the time. The only difference is the intensity of your color is always, always going to be strongest using the spray stains because they're already in a very fluid form and they're going to give you that motion, that watery motion without actually adding water to them. So you'll get more vibrant colors using the stains. That's the only difference really. So that's one option here. We'll go ahead and dry that down. And like I mentioned, I did a couple different color combos. So let's just take a look at one more. And for this one, we're gonna use a little bit of pumice stone dist distress spray stain. And then we're gonna use a little bit of tumbled glass distress oxide spray. Now the oxide spray is gonna give us more of a milky consistency and the oxide, the pigment will always come to the surface when you're mixing these colors. So even if I mix them together here on the palette, as it dries, the oxides are going to lift to the surface of the paper. So it's just another great look. Now the tumbled, tumbled glass is very bright, but you'll see here when we mix it across our palette, we're going to get this um, more muted, almost like a speckled egg color, and then a little bit of like an evergreen bow color. 
So we're getting that gray, we're getting that bright blue, we're getting almost like a speckled egg color and a teal. So four colors, but we only used two sprays on our mat. So it, it just all depends on the colors that you choose. Now, if you choose colors that are opposite on the color wheel, so say like an orange and a blue, and you start mixing those around on your mat and letting them all mingle, you're gonna get brown. You're gonna end up with mud. So make sure that if you're using two colors, three colors, and you're gonna mix them together like I'm doing here, um, make sure that there are colors that will play nicely together. And sometimes you will be surprised. I was super surprised that the, um, the earlier combo of Vintage Photo and Salvaged Patina gave me such a beautiful green. I didn't expect that because it was brown and blue. But because that vintage photo has so much yellowy orange red in it, because it's so warm, it mixed with that blue, which gave us a green. So don't be afraid to try it either. Just know that if you get mud, it's because you had your opposite colors in there, or you had all three of your primaries mixing all together. That'll give you mud too. All right, so that's just a look at something a little bit different here. Like I said, with the pumice stone and the tumbled glass, definitely more of a wintry vibe. Whereas before I was going for more of um, just like a woodsy vibe. But I wanted to include a little different color combo for those of you who maybe prefer those cooler icy tones for Christmas cards. After all, this is a Christmas set and so the sentiments in it would work perfect with these more cooler tones. Okay, so let's take a look at the next step. These three are dry now. We're gonna work on this one here. And I'm gonna add some stamping to the background, but I'm just gonna do some very loose watercolor stamping. I've got our uh, script background stamp here. Again, this one is retired, but I know a lot of you out there have it. So this is a great use for it. We also have Vintage Ephemera, which has a smaller stamp in it that you could repeatedly stamp as well. I've inked this up with Stress Oxide and Bundled Sage. Then I'm gonna mist it with a couple quick squirts of uh, water. And then I'm just going to randomly stamp this around the background. I, this is one of my favorite tricks and I've done this a lot in the past. It just adds some illegible text-like stuff going on in the background that isn't meant to be read. It's just there to add a little bit of interest to break up some of the white space and it's a fun technique. So I'm not trying to get perfect impression you can see here I'm using that acetate that the stamp comes on as my block and that allows me to flex it so that I don't just stamp a solid wall-to-wall -wall text across the background and now I'm squirting it with a couple of drops from the distress sprayer and I repeated the same thing with the other backgrounds just in maybe a different order or a different amount. Okay, so we've taken a look at how to use this image in our background, but let's bring it to the foreground now and, and look at it as more of a focal point, which is what a lot of people would generally look at this image as. So the other option you have is to stamp this and then add a little bit of extra color to it. Uh, again, this is nowhere near as intimidating as trying to watercolor or Copic color this image because the water and the water reactive ink is gonna kinda do all the work for you. So I'm using a little bit of Distress Oxide in, um, what did I use here? Vintage Photo, Frayed Burlap, Gathered Twigs, one of the browns. Inked up the pine cones. You can see here I'm just, I am um, strategically inking this up. So I've used a little bit of the brown and then here I'm using a little bit of bundled sage to hit just the pine needles. I'm gonna spray this with some water, just like we did um, when we were stamping it with the Distress Spray Stain. And then we're gonna stamp this down. Now because I was doing some selective inking, you can see there I missed a little bit of the image on the pine, but that's okay because we're going to, again, add some extra color here, right? We're going to, we don't want this to be crisp and clean, although this looks beautiful. You could use this and be done, but we want that washy look. So I'm taking a damp paintbrush here. This is just clear, clean water, and I'm going to reactivate some of that ink and move it around to create the look of watercoloring. But really all I'm doing is dragging a damp brush across this image. That's it. Again, that little bit of water is going to reactivate some of that ink and it's gonna move around. 
Now, you could stop here. Let's take it a step further. I'm gonna spray out a little bit of that salvage patina and then a little bit of that vintage photo onto my craft mat here and we're gonna paint with this. But we're not doing very detailed painting. This is very doable. We're gonna pick up a little bit of that vintage photo and I'm just dotting it into some of the open areas of the pine cone illustration. Literally just dotting it. I've got this at, um, this is at real speed here. So you can see that I'm just tapping that brush around into the open areas. I haven't added any extra water because we already have the water on the paper from where we moved the ink around previously. To get that green, I already know that the vintage photo and the salvage patina, when you mix them together, make a really pretty green and we want it to match. So we're gonna use the same color scheme as we did for our previous cards. And I'm just adding in a little extra color here on these pine branches. I'm gonna encourage it to spread out just a little bit further and then add some splatters because that's, that's what I like, that's my personal style, but you could skip this part. But honestly, you can see here how quickly we are able to get the look of loose watercolor or expressive watercolor, but it really does not take much effort at all. And you can do as little or as much um, playing here as you want. Like you could stop here, you could have stopped prior, you can take it even further. Y'all already know that I'm going to take it further <laughs> because I'm, I didn't want this to be hyper-focused. But I am going to share another way if you want to keep it more focused and with a little more detail, if that's your jam. Still very doable, but a little more detailed. So let's recap our background so far because this next one, we're going to bring it to the foreground. And we don't want our lines to dissolve. So I'm stamping this with Better Press ink and bark because it is waterproof. And I'm using some Fabriano Artistical Cold Pressed Watercolor Paper. This time we're gonna be painting with Distress Stains. We wanna match that color intensity that we had in the background. And this will be mm, very similar to painting with like liquid watercolors. I'm keeping with the same color palette. So I've sprayed a little bit of that vintage photo Distress stain onto my acrylic block and I'm just going to use that to paint my image here. I'm going to start with a very light diluted amount so I'm picking up some water on my brush and then I'm going to pull out just a, the tiniest bit of that uh, paint, that color, I called it paint, that ink. <laughs> We're using it like paint but you can see just how little I picked up. I'm putting down just a tinted layer of water basically over all of the stem here. Then I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that color and start dropping that in. I'll, I wanna do it while it's still wet so that it does blend, kind of soften those edges a little bit. But remember, I'm not going for hyper-realism on this. I still want something very approachable and doable for a beginner. This also shows the versatility of just this one image. Remember, we've used this now in several ways. We've done very loose watercolor stamping for the background. We used it with a little less loose watercolor stamping for a focal point. And now we're moving into a little bit more detailed um, imagery for our focal point. Now you could certainly go as detailed and as controlled with this as you wanted, but it's really not necessary. I am not going to color every nook and cranny of these pine cones. I'm gonna leave tons of white space. And I am going to let these layers dry back and then come in and add a little bit more detail. This is a great way, especially for a beginner, lay down a light color as your base, let that dry, and then come in and add some of your darker, your deeper darks. This is gonna give you a little more control because you'll be doing wet on dry and it won't, uh, the color won't run away from you. So I'm gonna throw this into just a little bit faster motion. You'll still be able to see what's going on, but you'll definitely be able to tell that I'm not uh, overly concerned with coloring every single little bit of this. And I did wanna point out earlier, I told you that I find that the Distress Stains and stuff, because they are ink-based, work best on the mixed media paper versus the watercolor paper. But then I did tell you that I'm doing this on watercolor paper. 
And there's a caveat there. This is the Fabriano Artistico Enhanced Watercolor Paper. This enhanced watercolor paper has a lot more sizing than say your Arches paper or even your original Fabriano Artistico. So this does have quite a bit more sizing on it, which is just a uh, gelatin coating that the paper is soaked in. And then also, so cotton watercolor paper, they can soak it in the gelatin so that it is inside the paper and on top of the paper because it's cotton and it absorbs. Um, but then they can also brush the exterior, co coat the exterior with uh, gelatin as well. And that's the sizing. And I believe that this one has, I can tell that it has much more sizing. And the reason that I can tell that is because the ink sits on top of the paper more and it is much easier to lift the ink off of this paper. Another reason that I can get away with using the watercolor paper is because I'm not doing a ton of washy watercolor here. I'm not depending on the flow so much, so it's okay if it, sta it stains in some places. I'm doing a lot of um, wet on dry here, so I'm just layering different intensities of color rather than creating blends and uh, washes. So now let's add in a little bit of the greenery on that pine. And for that, I just, I could have mixed my um, salvaged patina and the vintage photo, but I wanted to show you that you can, if you have a uh, sage green or any of your other greens, you can certainly uh, skip the mixing and go straight to that. But if you don't have a lot of colors, you can certainly mix your own like I did when we used the salvage patina and the vintage photo. All right, so this is pretty much done. I went ahead and used the coordinating dies to die cut this out. And then off camera, I painted and die cut a second one as well. This is the background that I chose to use for this one. Here you can see I'm trying to decide exactly how I want to arrange this. Um, my first thought was, you know, to do the top and the bottom mirrored, trim off the excess, and this could have definitely worked. A uh, nice, uh, sentiment there in the center would look beautiful. The background gives it the illusion of being like, say, a wreath. I think that that would have looked really good, but ultimately I decided to go a different route. In the meantime, I decided to work on the background, build that up before, you know, deciding on that focal point. So I grabbed this Honeybee Stamps Adventure Awaits pattern paper pad, and I thought it would look pretty ma uh, matted with a pattern paper and then car and then craft. So I flipped through this pad until I found exactly what I, a lot of these would have worked actually. Um, but ultimately I chose the green. I really liked that deeper green. We had that super dark brown in the pine cones, which draws your attention to the front. Uh, but I wanted to match the intensity of that deep brown with the green. And a great way to do that would be to use that darker green paper to recess into the back um, it kind of grounds it, brings some of that depth and darkness to the background and matches the intensity in that brown. Now the previous two cards I made all featured some stitching, so we're going to add a little bit of stitching around the outer edge of this. And I'm just using the uh, sewing machine here to do a straight stitch all around the outside of this panel. All right, so I finally settled on a layout here. To me, it kind of was like looking through the pines. The out of focus pine images in the background look almost like they're off in the distance and then you had these branches that were in focus at least that's what I was going for maybe I hit it maybe I didn't but I, it's mine it, I'm the artist I'm creating my own world here <laughs> if I say that's what it is and that's what it is you guys have seen me assemble cards a million times already on the channel I did go back and forth with my sentiment so I cut a couple so I could try out some different ones ultimately I ended up with the always thinking of you as always, I used a couple of different heights of foam tape along with liquid adhesive, trimmed off anything that was hanging over the edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the finished cards here and we're gonna review those. And I could not be happier with the way that these turned out. We started with all of the same basic techniques, right? So we used that um, distress stain stamping in the background to create this very loose, washy background 
added some stamping over it. We created those focal images with a little bit more controlled watercolor using those distress stains. Then I added a little bit of some mirror gold cardstock. I used the Honeybee Stamps winter, I think it's the winter foliage. Everything will be linked in the description box below. I cut one of those and tucked pieces of those in our arrangement. And then for this card, this is the one that we stamped the leftover ink on. So remember after we did that background panel, we just re-wet that stamp and stamped the what was left onto this panel and then added a little extra water to wash it out. And that focal panel has a um, that same distress stamping in the background. So you can see that focal panel there. That was a background that we created and then we just layered that other one on top. We added some stitching in here. Love the way this turned out. Some buttons and then of course some gold splatters because no Christmas card is complete without a little bit of shine. Then finally for this one we used the little bit more detailed one. Still not as detailed as the first one but this is the one that we stamped with our oxides and then added a little extra color. Here we used that same paper to create a little torn edge. I added a little bit of some cheesecloth here that I colored with that mixing that, that uh, patina, the salvaged patina and the vintage photo and another one of those distress stained stamped backgrounds with the text on it. Added a few buttons, some burlap, left some loose threads. Absolutely love the way this one turned out. I love that split back there. So you've got that craft showing, that torn edge, and then that watercolored panel. Oh, so beautiful. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you picked up some tips and tricks that you can incorporate into your personal crafting. If you like this video, don't forget to thumbs up. If you are not already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next video. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've gotten better about posting more often. I am having so much fun and I do really appreciate it when you guys leave me comments and I do get in there and try to answer any questions that you guys have. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.